the video. This is going to be a little bit different. As you can see, we're not in our usual venue. Um, we're going to be diving into a different aspect of casting, much larger scale. Um, we're going to be addressing a few of the issues that we see online. We're going to be talking about a build that we, we built here and just some general safety and things that you need to keep in mind when you do this. Now, big disclaimer, I do not recommend you build one of these. Buying it just removes so much liability from anything that you're going to do yourself. So without further ado, let's talk about the build that I've done and we'll talk about some of the, the things that I've seen wrong, some of the things I've seen right, some things I'd rather do right, or some things that I'd rather do differently. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So this is our build. Um, this was all completely DIY, used from recycled material for the most part. Um, the body of this build was actually from a water pressure tank, like for a house. Um, we found that this was, well, it was readily available for one thing. Um, it wasn't a propane tank. Propane tanks, especially if they're used, obviously they had a flammable gas in them, not the most ideal tanks to use. This one had a nice wall thickness of about an eighth. Thicker would have been nicer. If you can find one better, more power to you. It means it's gonna last longer in the, in the, in the long run. So this tank was actually significantly taller. Um, this is probably about a third of the tank overall. We used an angle grinder and we trimmed it up. We, we cut another slice off of the ring and created that for the, the lid. And there's different kinds of lids that you can go for. Uh, you could have a hinge flip top. In this case, we did something a little differently where the lid, of, the lid swings to the side and it's held on by a post. Um, I quite like this design. We have, uh, this is more of a, an industrial size or in, industrial design lid. Uh, flipping it off to the side is just very simple action that doesn't require a whole lot of thought. And also it's, it's very important that you have a lid that doesn't touch the ground. It doesn't get cold. So if you were to put this down on the ground, it would, it's, it's blazing hot. It's probably, it's likely to cause damage to the insulation. So the insulation we used, th this is kind of where things break down a little bit for a lot of people because you're told so much, you see so many of these DIY projects where they're using, you know, play sand and plaster method. Um, that method is just, for lack of better term, it's complete crap. It's not going to last very long. And for something at this scale, it would break down almost instantly. As soon as you light the, the flame, it's just gonna start to crumble. So we went with something better. Um, this is Fiberfrax, also known as Kaowul. It's basically a ceramic blanket. And basically it's little fibers of ceramic that have been woven together. And it creates this nice flexible very, 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 very heat resistant um, insulation. So Fiberfrax is a material that is typically used in professionally made forges, like blacksmith forges. Um, this stuff is not particularly durable. You mostly find it in like the door aspect of them. Uh, for the most part, you'd actually use like castable, refractory cement sort of material. So to help stabilize it, I know this is a little bit controversial because I've heard both sides of the story, and I tend to just err towards caution because it makes sense. Um, I've heard manufacturers say that this stuff is not dangerous, um, and I've heard others say it's the worst thing ever. Uh, it, basically, if you cut it, the ceramic can break apart and create little spores, and that gets into the air, and if you breathe it, it's, it's very, very bad for your health. You can get silicosis from that. It's really bad. Now, there's a product that they make you can put on top of this called Rigidizer, and essentially it's just uh, dissolved silica. You paint it on with a paintbrush and it just keeps those spores in the material. Now that's only really an issue, uh, more re referring to a blacksmith forge where if you, for example, put something in and you happen to hit the side, um, you can poke a hole through it and, and you can have those release of, of ceramic. Um, in this case, because it's a foundry, it's really just for insulation purposes. Unless something really went wrong in our little process of removing the, 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 the crucible, um, we're probably not going to be doing that. So it's not that big a deal, but still, I just err on the side of caution. For the you know, $10 to $30 investment uh, for your health, that's invaluable. So I would recommend going that route. So because this was a round tank, um, I got a round kiln shelf, which is like a ceramic board. It kind of, uh, it's for potters. Usually it's what they put their, their, their pottery on top of when it goes into the kiln. I have one of those on the bottom, a hard, a hard bottom. So as that deteriorates, I can just replace it, which is quite nice. Um, they do make ones that are made of like a, a high silicon carbide or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm even using that term properly, um, but you can get one that like, they're almost indestructible 
then you can put those on the bottom and then it gives you a nice flat surface to work on. So around the top here, I'm also using a high temp mortar. Uh, this is typically used for like kiln repair. Um, just to, you know, if, if a little thing falls over, it gashes one of the, uh, the bricks. To make it nice again, you can use this stuff or you use it to stick the bricks together inside typically a potter's kiln. So this stuff has like a, a maximum temperature of like 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. Um, I've also packed the bottom of this with, with like an extra, extra thick layer of KO wool. And then I put the kiln shelf on top of it. So this is also burning propane. Now there's so many different ways you can go with propane burners, but the most surefire way I, I recommend is just buying burners. Don't build burners. They are very dangerous if you get it wrong. Uh, explosively so, I do just I, I strongly recommend not doing it. That's probably the part that makes these the most hazardous and most illegal overall. Now, I, I think it's very different to build your own uh, foundry shell and then just buy burners and attach them on. So I bought these burners from NC Tool Company, uh, separate from their normal blacksmith forge that they usually sell. They are uh, an atmospheric style of burner, so they just pull in fresh air around the burners. They also come with an auto ignition system, so you don't have to worry about tossing in a burning piece of paper or anything like that. You can build, you can get these burners from one up to, I think they have like a massive stack of like 12, which is obscene. Um, I think three is more than okay. Uh, in one of their forges that I have experience with, these forges will easily get up to about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than enough to forge well. So this is the size crucible that we're using. Um, this is about as large as I can get from Gaswin. Uh, this is called a bilge crucible and it's made out of a graphite clay, I believe. Um, this will easily fit inside here. There's plenty of room, as you can see. And um, at the moment, we're gonna be melting aluminum. Now, the reason I built this for myself was mostly so I could be doing bronze, small sculpture. The, the melting temperature of bronze is about 2100 degrees. And I know that for a fact, this will easily get up to 2000. So we're not too far off. Along with the foundry, when I was building it, I built some custom tools. I've got a, uh, a little rake here for scraping the, the oxide off the surface of the metal. We have a special, uh, spare, we have a special pair of tongs that we can reach into the, the hot foundry and lift the crucible out. And we also have a holder that also acts as kind of like a pouring mechanism. So thanks for watching this video. I just wanted to bring this out because um, well, I haven't used this tool a whole lot. It doesn't really live with us in our normal studio. And I wanted to present um, to my subscribers something that, something that might be a little bit safer than some of the DIY projects you might see online. Um, there's nothing particularly wrong with those, but just taking those few extra steps, doing research, getting the proper equipment and materials goes so, much, uh, goes so far that it's, it's well worth your time and effort. It could also make your foundry last way longer, and ultimately that is a better investment for you. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Comment if you have any questions. Uh, reach out. We're always open to answering questions. I can help you out and, and give you some of the uh, suppliers that I got this stuff from. So we'll see you in the, ne in the next one. Oh, my knees. <laughs>